This laptop saved my Ukrainian friend's life, and now they need me to help save its life. In 2022, my friend, who was only 17 years old, was forced to flee his home when Russia began dropping bombs on his town. One of the few things he was able to grab before going to the bomb shelter was his laptop bag with this HP inside. He credits his life to this, because even though the electricity was cut off for weeks, the laptop kept his phone charged long enough to arrange transportation out of the country until he finally arrived here in Salem, where we became friends. So, as you can imagine, this laptop holds sentimental value. And when he told me it was crashing and doing typical HP things, I told him, hey, did you forget your friends with the greatest technician that's ever lived? So, he brought it to my repair shop, and turns out, the free storage space is lower than my IQ, the CP was getting hotter than my brain when I try to do basic math, and the heatsink has enough swamp gooch to make Shrek jealous. So I'm gonna give him this top-the-line $180 2TB Samsung SSD, rip the pubes from the heatsink, and reapply the thermal paste. And I'm not gonna charge him for any of it. Because, politics aside, this kid has been through so much. And I'm a strong believer that if you're in the position to help somebody out, whether it's by using your skills or your resources, you should. And before my inbox gets flooded with a bunch of shameless beggars asking for handouts, or people that complain when YouTubers make videos of them doing nice things, I want to make this clear. I run a computer repair business. That's my main source of income. The little money I make on YouTube shorts won't even pay for the SSD I'm about to use in this repair. But I do appreciate every single one of you unhinged lunatics that watch my nonsense because it allows me to do things like this. And unfortunately, I can't pay my bills with good gestures, and neither can you. But I do believe if everybody helped out someone in need when they could, the world might not be so shitty. And I'm proud to use my platform to show how a small gesture can make such a huge difference in someone's life. Anyways, let's fix this shit. The first issue to address is the fact the C drive on this 512 gigabyte SSD is full. And to do that, we need to first clone the drive over to a bigger one before we start fiddling with the partitions. So I'm gonna plug in the new NVMe using a USB C to NVMe adapter that you can get in my Amazon store, and boot into a portable version of Macrium Reflect. And the clone took no time at all. So it's time to bust this thing open and... <laughs> oh. Yeah, about this fake hard drive. I think this is actually pretty clever. This little hard drive has the mounts and connector if you want to connect a 2.5 inch SATA for extra storage in the future. And the fake plastic helps add rigidity and sturdiness to the frame, which is a rare W for HP, but it's one that's earned. Anyways, we have to prep the new SSD with this heatsink and a thermal pad before we remove the old NVMe and install this one. Now comes the part that was slightly annoying. I don't know what HP was smoking when they partitioned this drive, but it makes it so it's impossible to just extend or shrink the partitions. Because even if you delete this recovery partition, you can only extend the C drive up to here. And even if you delete this partition and extend this one, when you go to shrink this partition, it'll shrink it at the end, which means you still can't extend the C drive. That means I have to manually copy and paste all the stuff from the G partition, then delete all three of these partitions partitions, extend the C drive all the way to one terabyte, and then make a new partition for the G drive that's also one terabyte, and then move the data back over to the G partition. So it's kind of a pain, but because I'm using a USB-C and an NVMe, it really only took about an hour or so. There are some programs that offer to resize it automatically, but the time it takes to move and rewrite the data is longer than if I just do it manually through disk part, which... I completely forgot to film the disk part process, so please forgive me on that one. But now that we have storage, it's time to cool this baby down. That means off comes that back panel again, unplug the battery, and start unscrewing those fans and the heatsink. Now the thermal paste doesn't look too bad, there is some hefty gooch in the heatsink though. So we'll take the infamous toothbrush that has belonged to each member of your extended family, and just clean that grill out. Then I'm gonna take some PTM7950 that you can also buy in my Amazon store, and do some very accurate measuring and cutting for the CPU and GPU. Don't forget to peel off the plastic after you do this. Then the heatsink goes back on, and here we are. A cool and stable laptop that will hopefully last my friend through some better years compared to what it's seen before. Please forgive my lack of footage, but I'm still getting the hang of running a repair shop and recording things at the same time. And sometimes I get so tuned in, I forget to record things. So, if you guys have any questions about this repair that I left out, feel free to just ask me in the comments, and I'll make sure not to answer you. But seriously, I do appreciate every one of you watching, and if you have the ability to help somebody out, do it.